Yeah, hi guys, welcome to my video. So this video will show you how to create a Windows Server 2016 virtual machine um, from scratch um, manually within the Azure portal. Uh, we have done this in previous videos within my channel showing how to script the, 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 the VM um, via Terraform. But this video will just show a manual process. Um, as you can see we've got a current resource group in UK South. Um, this does contain um, some network security groups, a VNet and some availability sets. Uh, we won't be using this resource group for this creation of, of the VM so we will, we will create our, our own resource group together with our a separate VNet um, etc within uh, a different region UK uh, West. So if we click on virtual machines and then if we click on add so if we create a new resource group within UK West if we name that RGUKW in the region UK West. The server name will be server01. We create a new availability set as well. And in our image, we will choose Windows Server 2016 Data Center. with a standard DS1 size. So if we type the username and then the password to connect to our instance once it's running. We will allow um, remote desktop protocol RDP port 3389 so we can connect to it over the internet. If we click next And then for the disk type, if we use a uh, standard HDD, standard hard disk drive, we don't need to really be using SSD for this test. And then if we use the manage disks and then click next. So for the virtual network, uh, we want to create another virtual network VNet within UK West. So if we name that UKW, and then we'll, we'll use another address space which is different to UK South. So if we use 192.168.0.0 slash 16 as a hold address space, we'll create a, a, a subnet called Frontend. And then the subnet address range for, for Frontend can be 192.168.1.0 slash 24 address. we we'll create a public IP address so we can connect to it in a moment via RDP. we we'll just use a basic network security group and then we'll allow the RDP port. Click next. For management we can create a, a diagnostic storage account and then just leave everything else by default. Click next. Click next on the guest config, on the tag click next. And then we can review our, our configuration uh, and then click create. Okay, so the deployment is now underway. As you can see the virtual machine is creating at the moment. We'll stop the video here and then come back when it's when it's all done. So our virtual machine is now running. So if we click on our 
our VM. We can just have a look. So as you can see, it's the standard size that we specified. If we click on networking, we can see that the security groups have been created, so RDP is allowed. The VM has been created in the front end network or front end subnet. We've got a private IP address, a public IP address. If we click on the network interface card, go to IP configuration and then go to the IP config. So this is where you can change your private IP address to a static one if, if, if you like. Um, if you go to DNS servers, you can either inherit it from the VNet or you can create a custom on that particular VM. So if we go to VNet, as you can see we've got a new VNet in UK West. Click on address space so we can see we've got a slash 16 address space with a front end subnet created. If we click on DNS servers we can either use the custom or the default. So if we go back to our VMs, virtual machines and then VM. If we click in the, into the VM we can see our network security groups are assigned to the VM itself currently. So we can assign a network security group to the VNet instead. So every time the, a, a virtual machine is created it's going to use that net network security group of the VNet. So if you look here on front end subnet that's currently none and you can assign an NSD here. So if we go back to our VMs, drill down into the VM and then if we copy the public address we can now connect to it. So if we click start run MSTSC to get the RDP client ready. So click connect type the username and password, click yes and now we're connected to that virtual machine in Azure over the internet. If we go to a command line cmd and if we type ipconfig forward slash all we can then see the IP address has been assigned together with DNS etc. Okay thanks guys so that's the end of the video I hope it was useful as I say this was a manual process of creating a VM and a VNAT there are videos within my channel that explain this how to do it scripted via Terraform. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, see you guys soon. Thank you.